Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for our West Placer Virtual Community Town Hall. It's an update this evening on the, the development and the construction in our West Placer area. I'm Placer County Supervisor Bonnie Gore, and I represent the Roseville area, primarily from Fidiment Road east to Roseville Parkway, and then the Dry Creek area in the unincorporated area of Placer County, which is primarily south of Baseline Road. Also joining me this evening are Supervisor Shanti Landon and Mayor Bruce Hodeschelt. We are recording this presentation and it will be available for viewing on my county webpage by the end of the week. And you can find that by going to placer.ca.gov forward slash Bonnie Gore. This is our third community meeting and we've been talking about development and construction in the area. In 2021, we gave an outlook as well as we discussed future highway expansions, including Highway 65 projects and the future Placer Parkway, which would connect Highway 65 to Highway 99. In October of 2021, we focused on water and we heard from the Placer County Water Agency and the city of Roseville. Last year, we hosted crops and cul-de-sacs and we discussed the agricultural urban interface in West Placer County. If you haven't had a chance to see these presentations, you're welcome to check them out on my website. So here's the agenda for the evening. First, I'll review the geographic area that we're discussing. Then we'll hear from Supervisor Shanti Landon, who now represents our residents in West Roseville, west of Fidiment Road. We'll, we will hear about approved development projects in West Placer County that have not yet broken ground. And then we'll provide an update on construction and infrastructure improvements taking place in that area and how to get up to date with, that, with what's happening. Mayor Hodeschelt will lead the discussion for the City of Roseville to give an update on their current and upcoming projects. Then we will hear from the Placer County Water Agency about the current status of our water, hint it's really good right now, and how we ensure we have enough water for our future development. And then the final topic of the evening will be Baseline Road and other major road projects in West Placer. When we wrap up, we will provide all of the contact information for our presenters in case you have more questions. Now, speaking of questions, questions that were submitted by you ahead of time have been provided to our presenters to include in their presentations. And any questions that have been submitted that are about specific issues, we will make sure to respond directly to you uh, to get back to you. One note about public comment, we have had, we're not having public comment this evening, we've had over 800 people register for the webinar, which is terrific. And if we gave everyone an opportunity to ask questions times three minutes, we'd be here for a few days. So, uh, we won't be taking questions, but know that at any time, if you've got questions, you can reach out to myself or the presenters. And most, like I said, most of the questions that you have will be answered, but we do have some folks standing by and they will be available in the Q&A box of the Zoom call. They will be available to answer questions. We have folks from Placer County Planning, we have County Engineering and Surveying, the City of Roseville and PCWA. So it's a full presentation and let's get started. Let's start with Placer County. And as most of you know, Placer County goes from Sacramento County line up to Lake Tahoe. And the West Placer area is this here, which is basically west of Roseville, west of Rockland and south of the city of Lincoln, going out to the Sacramento and Sutter County lines. This is a close-up of the area, and I'm gonna step back just a little bit so that you can see. The portion outlined in blue is the city of Roseville. And then to the west of the area, so you've got the blue here, to the west of the areas and south of the city of Roseville, you have unincorporated Placer County. Let me point out some of the development projects. These are specific plans that have been approved by the Board of Supervisors. We have Placer Ranch in the pink up here that was approved by the Board of Supervisors in 2019. And that's actually where we're having the future Sacramento State Satellite Campus. We have Regional University in the blue. 
and that area was approved by the Board of Supervisors in 2008. The Placer Vineyard specific plan south of Baseline Road and the pink here was approved by the board in 2007. And the Riova Vineyard specific plan down here uh, just to the east of Placer Vineyards was approved by the board in 2009 and a lot of that has already been built up. Now we'll move to the city of Roseville and here are some of the specific plans in the city of Roseville. Creek View is the teal area up here, and that was approved by the Roseville City Council in 2012. We have the West, West Roseville specific plan, the Manila, large Manila area that was approved by the council in 2004. The Sierra Vista specific plan, the turquoise area over here was approved by the Roseville City Council in 2010. And then finally, Amoruso Ranch specific plan uh, up here, the yellow up here, and that was, a, that was approved in 2017. So yes, it is a lot of development, but I want you to know that both the county and the city have really worked hard to balance the needs of these specific plans. And the specific plan is like a 10,000 foot look at a development area and not only does it include housing, but it includes specific zoning for businesses and commercial, schools, parks, fire stations, basically pretty much what you want in a community. And these plans take years before they are approved, anywhere between five and 10 years. There were numer numerous public meetings, a lot of community input about these plans before they were approved. And most of these plans were approved actually more than a decade ago. Uh, neither myself, Mayor Hodeschelt, or Supervisor Landon were, none of us were actually on the City Council or the Board of Supervisors when most of these plans were approved. And now you all are seeing all this construction out in the West Roseville area. Economic conditions, they drive the development of housing. And as you know, we're in need of housing in our community. But please know we work really hard to balance the growth. We have planned for parks, for trails, for, op for open space, and we're making sure that we have job centers so Roseville residents and West Placer residents can work closer to where they live. You know, this is a great place to live, and our purpose this evening is to inform you and make sure you know who to contact when you've got questions. So now it is my pleasure to introduce Supervisor Shanti Landon. Hi, Shanti. Great Hi, to see you. Thank you. You too. Uh, Supervisor Landon was elected to the Placer County Board of Supervisors in November of 2022 after serving as the district director for Supervisor Robert Wygant for over five years. She was raised in the Sierra Nevada foothills in the town of Jackson, California. She earned her bachelor's degree in journalism with a minor in religious studies at Cal State Sacramento. She's married to her husband, Chris, and they have five children. So take it away, Shanti. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here tonight. I'm excited that we get to have this conversation with all of you. Again, my name is Shanti Landon and I am the District 2 Supervisor, which encompasses all of Lincoln, Sheridan, and then West Roseville, west of Fittiment and north of Baseline. So part of my goal being here on the Board of Supervisors is to make sure that as we are approving future development and looking down the road, that we are very cognizant about the levels of service that we're going to need to provide. It's very important that we think about the levels of public safety that we're going to need 20 or 30 years out from now and not just be looking at today. So tonight you're going to hear from a number of experts who really know a lot more about the technical details. And so I'm really excited to first introduce you to Chris Bahuli, who is Placer County's Planning Director, and he has been on the job for about two months. He comes to Placer County with over 24 years of experience in the community development profession. 
Most recently, he was with Sacramento County serving as a principal planner and leading their current planning and design review section. He also has experience working in the redevelopment and affordable housing fields during his time with the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency. And a couple fun facts about Chris. He does not play any musical instruments. He's been married for 26 years and has two boys. And his oldest son, Mason, is a D1 college soccer player. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Landon. Um, I appreciate being here and, and with the uh, audience here uh, this evening. Uh, for this important town hall meeting to let residents know about planned development in, uh, in their community. As Supervisor Gore mentioned uh, in her introductory remarks, there are four approved specific plans in this portion of the unincorporated Placer County. Uh, those areas are where growth is going to be occurring in the decades to come, and my team in the planning department has been hard at work in preparing for implementation of those plans. Uh, over the past few years, we have started to see major new investments and development occurring in those areas, which we're expecting to see increase significantly over the coming years. Uh, currently, most of the development activity is concentrated in the Dry Creek Community Plan area, um, and there are two specific plans uh, that are covered in that community plan area. Those are Placer Vineyards and Riolo Vineyards. Uh, but there are a lot of other investments taking place as well outside of those specific plans, and I plan to provide an update on those all. Uh, my goal with this presentation is to provide an overview of those planned and under construction developments in unincorporated Placer County. Um, and uh, I do have a few, few slides that I'll use with this presentation to help orient the audience and provide visual support. So with that brief overview, um, I'll ask that we pull up the first slide and uh, get underway. Um, so this uh, map here, which uh, Supervisor Gore used in her presentation, uh, does uh, show broadly the uh, Western Placer County area. Uh, the red line in the middle of the map here, just to orient folks, is uh, Willerga Road on the uh, south portion of the map, uh, and which turns into Fittiment as you head north. Uh, at the south end of the plan area is Pla the Placer Vineyards specific plan and the Riolo Vineyards um, specific plan areas. The Placer Vineyard area is in purple and Riolo Vineyards is in yellow. Uh, Baseline Road, uh, which is running here east to west, uh, is at the northern border, uh, border of those plan areas. I'll also point out the two other uh, specific plan areas on the map, Regional University in blue and uh, the uh, Placer, uh, I'm sorry, the Placer Ranch specific plan in, in pink, which was, was already mentioned uh, with Supervisor Gore's remarks. Next slide, please. This slide here further uh, shows the Dry Creek community plan area, which is approximately 9,200 uh, acres and covers the area immediately south and west of the city of Roseville, south of Baseline Road to the Sacramento County line and west to Sutter County. As I mentioned, most of the development in the area is concentrated in the two specific plans, uh, Placer Vineyards and Riolo. However, there are investments occurring outside of those areas that I'll highlight in a few moments. Next slide. Uh, but I first wanted to start with an update on Placer Vineyards uh, specific plan, which again was approved in 2007. Uh, the plan area encompasses over 5,200 acres, and at build-out will contain over 14,000 residences, retail, parks, and open space. The colored polygons uh, represent the current development activity consisting of seven properties, uh, totaling 1,500 acres and include 5,200 residences and up to 400,000 square feet of commercial land use. Currently, there is one subdivision under construction, Lennar's Heritage Subdivision, which is shown in blue on the exhibit. Um, this development is an age-restricted subdivision of nearly 1,200 units. The su subdivision also has an affordable housing requirement, and talks are underway with a developer to build a 168-unit affordable uh, development on a high-density residential lot. In addition, there are two subdivisions that have been approved and have submitted infrastructure plans that represent roughly 2,000 units. These properties are shown as 4B and 7 on the map. 
there are three subdivisions that have been approved but have not submitted for infrastructure plans representing 2,100 units shown as 12B, 15, and 19 on the map. Lastly, there is one subdivision submitted to the planning department for subdivision review representing 400 units and is just south of property 1A. Next slide, please. Uh, next up is the Riolo Vineyard Specific Plan, which was approved in 2009 and consists of 525 acres planned for just under 1,000 low, medium, and high density residential units, plus parks, open space, and a small amount of commercial use. Currently, there is not a lot, or currently there is a lot of single family construction occurring in this plan area, as was mentioned earlier. Mariposa Farms with 106 lots is nearing completion along Alerga Road. The Glen Willow and Mason Trail subdivisions are under construction that will build out nearly 350 homes. There are also two subdivisions currently being reviewed by the county, which if approved will add nearly 400 lots. Next slide. The graphic on this slide shows a lot of information um, so I'll spend some time explaining it. The shapes on this slide represent projects currently in construction, approved and under entitlement review throughout the Dry Creek Community Plan area. As I noted earlier, much of the development is concentrated in the Placer Vineyards and Riolo specific plans. However, not all of it. To explain this map a little bit more, the red and orange squares uh, represent approved commercial and industrial projects. Uh, the circles on the map represent approved projects under construction. I noted the development activity in the specific plans. However, the circles outside of the specific plans represent an additional 400 units. The squares represent projects with approved entitlements that are not yet under construction. Again, outside of the specific plan areas, there are approvals for a 48 unit affordable housing development and about 46 single family lots. Lastly, the triangles represent projects that are in planning entitlement review with the county and represent about 1,200 lots outside of the specific plan area. Next slide. So taking a step back now, and if you remember the map that was shown earlier, this area, the uh, regional university area is to the north of Placer Vineyards. I'm going to speak a little bit about the Regional University Specific Plan. Uh, this exhibit shows the future land uses, which include a 600-acre university campus that is shown in purple on the graphic. The plan area is over 1,100 acres in total, and in addition to the university uses, will also develop 2,000 residential units plus nearly 25 acres of commercial land use in the eastern portion of the plan area. Last December, a phase one project was approved consisting of over a thousand low density residential units plus an 11 acre commercial development. The current status of that phase one development is that the property owner, Hillsdale College, is looking to partner with a home builder on the project before moving forward with submittal of improvement plans. Next slide. So shown here, is the Placer Ranch specific plan, uh, which is 2,200 acres and planned for 5,600 homes and roughly 8 million square feet of commercial development. Uh, the plan area includes a 300 acre site for CSU Sacramento's planned Placer campus. And that land was transferred from uh, Placer Ranch to the university in 2020. A first phase of the project is underway uh, the project includes 769 residential lots and rough grading began last fall with sewer, water, and drainage improvements being constructed now. Homes are expected to be underway for this development in early 2024. I should also note that CSU Sacramento has begun their campus master planning efforts for the 300 acre site, uh, but there are no current commitments for the construction of the campus. Next slide. Um, so lastly, I, I wanted to uh, wrap up my presentation that's been very development focused um, with a slide on conservation and protection of our natural resources in, uh, in West Placer. In 2020, the Placer 
County Board of Supervisors and the City of Lincoln adopted the Placer County Conservation Plan, or PCTP, uh, which provides the regulatory framework uh, to protect open space in the PCTP area. Uh, the PCTP plans to protect and manage over 47,000 acres over the 50, over 50 years, accomplishing this effort through development fees um, and dedication of land. This slide shows uh, the areas that are already under conservation uh, in the light green, um, and the areas for future con con uh, conservation are in dark green. Uh, currently, the PCCP has protected over 5,000 acres um, in meeting its goal of 47,000 acres. So with that, uh, that concludes uh, my update to the community. Um, Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Chris. We appreciate you coming and just giving your expertise. And if people have questions um, at the end, we'll make sure to provide some email addresses that you can reach out if you have specific questions for Chris. So thank you so much. And uh, next, I would like to introduce Matt Bartholomew. So Matt has been, um, he has an MS in Environmental and Resource Engineering from the State University of New York. He started with Placer County Public Works in 1999 after prior experience as a college professor, ski instructor, and private civil engineering practice. Now he is a senior engineering engineer in CEDRA, overseeing inspection of subdivisions, roads, and utility construction since 2008. And a fun fact about Matt, he is still driving the same 1997 Audi A4 that he had when he first came here in 1999. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Landon, and good evening, uh, viewers. Great to be here. Uh, I will tonight be reviewing major projects in the unincorporated West Placer Roseville area that are currently in active construction or are expected to go to construction this year. So Chris Bahuli just mentioned several of the specific plan projects, such as Placer Ranch, also known as Placer One now, uh, Placer Vineyards and Riolo Vineyards, which are a substantial uh, piece of that. There are a number of smaller projects we won't go into detail now, but we, the county has an interactive uh, tool on its website showing uh, all of the active projects or expected to go this season projects that I'm going to walk our viewers through and show it's a very handy tool for the public that you can go periodically, see updates on how these projects are coming along, if there's any planned major road closures, things of that nature. So thank you again for the, the fine introduction. And I will now move to a computer Great. so I can navigate us through. Alrighty, so I hope you've all experienced our website, placer.ca.gov. And I think the easiest way to find this, if you go to the search bar, top of the web page, and just type in current construction, it should bring you to the very first link, current construction, Placer County. And here we see a nifty photo of, I think it's five excavators building a very deep sewer within Riolo Vineyards over the past couple of seasons. And scroll down and you'll see this map here, Link to Western Placer Interactive Map. So that is the tool we're going to use to look at um, what's supposed to come up when you click on that interactive map is something that looks like this. And we have a number of items here. You'll see in red outline city limits, shaded areas uh, within red outline city limits. And if you look around West Placer here, We'll see several of these specific plan projects we mentioned earlier. Placer Ranch, also known as Placer One, to the north of the city of Roseville limits. We go further to the south along Willerga or Fittiment. <clears throat> we find Placer Vineyards, this large piece out here, uh, the far southwest corner of the county. A little bit further to the south and east is the Riola Vineyard specific plan. Placer Ranch, which is just north of the city limits on Fittiment. And I'll work with my zoom here a little bit. If you click on 
any of these projects, information will pop up showing you. Find one with a start date. We'll give you contact information, some information about start dates, contact information for the developer, some more specifics about lot numbers and acreage and so forth. So uh, in upcoming activities in Placer Ranch, very soon this spring, they will be doing some off-site sewer within the Roseville city limits coming down Fittiment and coming along Angus Road. There will be some traffic and noise impacts related to that, and there will be outreach before that gets underway to local residents in this area about how those impacts will be, be handled. In addition, the mass grading that began on the Placer County side last year will continue uh, this spring, weather permitting, when things dry out. Also related to this project will be some substantial sewer improvements along Athens and North Foothills Boulevard. Continuing south along Fittiment, we get to Baseline, and we'll see the Placer Vineyards project, which has been underway for a couple of seasons now. There will be ongoing street, utility, and home construction activities happening. There are not expected to be any substantive impacts to either Baseline or Willerga Road from those activities scheduled for this year. Continuing a little further south to the Riolo Vineyards area, there are ongoing park and utility and home building going within the Glen Willow and Mason Trails units. And there are no uh, grading uh, traffic impacts expected to PFE Road, and the Silver Sage portion may start mass grading this coming summer. Again, no major impacts expected to PFE Road. And the popular intersection for the last couple of years, PFE Willerga. Morgan Place is still underway and has some paving work planned in the coming weeks as soon as weather permits. So there will be some intermittent lane closures and disruption in that area lasting a few days. And that's about it. So that was a quick overview. Thank you. Um, why don't we move forward for a moment? And I would like to first find my notes, and then I would like to introduce Mayor Bruce Hattishell. So on December 21st, 2022, Bruce Hattishell became the 58th mayor in Roseville's 113 year history. Hattishell has lived in the South Placer region since 1991 and has worked for the past 15 years for the Northern California Water Association. And he and his wife, Shelly, live in the Summerhill neighborhood of the Highland Reserve community with their golden retriever. And his adult son attends Sierra College and works at the Nugget Market in the Campus Oaks Shopping Center. And a fun fact about Bruce that you might notice if you know Bruce and have seen him before, he's missing something on top of his head. And that is because for the past five years, he has shaved his head with St. Baldrick's and Keaton's Child Cancer Alliance in honor of kids who are fighting cancer. So thank you, Bruce, for being here. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Landon. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, for the better part of four decades that I've lived in the area, Roseville's quality of life has been solidly anchored in the specific plan process that Supervisor Gore mentioned to you earlier this evening. The specific plan process guides where parks and trails, roads and bridges, housing and job centers, schools, churches, hospitals, and shopping like the Galleria are appropriate in an environmentally balanced and sustainable manner. During my time in, in Roseville, I have served on the Public Utilities Commission and served six years, I think that's right, Greg, six years mm -hmm. on, the, on the Planning Commission. Roseville's highly recognized quality of life is carefully shepherded by professional planners like Greg Bitter, who you'll hear from shortly, and citizen volunteers who serve on our transportation, parks and recreation, and planning commissions. With us here, as I mentioned tonight, is a, a Roseville's planning director, Greg Bitter, who will share with us the latest build out in the West Park, Fenneman Farms, Sierra Vista, Creek View, and Maruso specific plan areas. All you, you saw that all on the map earlier. 
which have been approved, which which have been approved over the past two decades. Now a little bit about Greg. May I may I share, Greg? Yeah, I suppose so. You're the mayor. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, here we go. Greg manages the planning division for the city of Roseville's development services department. The planning division is made up of both long-range planning section and a current planning section and a citywide environmental, citywide environmental coordination. The long-range planning section is responsible for city's advanced planning efforts like the general plan, uh, maintenance, specific plan development that you saw earlier this evening, coordination with local, state, and federal agencies, legislative and policy review, and review of regional projects of significance. The current planning section is responsible for processing entitlements for private land use. We don't build anything. People build it. We plan it. Private land use projects, staffing the planning commission and design committee, providing general land use and zoning assistance to the public and development community, and assisting with code enforcement. The environmental coordination section supports a variety of city departments with environmental review and permitting assistance for city projects and programs and coordination of processing capital improvement projects or CIPs and citywide specific plans. Prior to working for the city of Roseville, Greg was a principal planner for the city of Sacramento where he managed the current planning section. He has a master's of art in urban and regional planning from the University of Florida. With that impressive, <laughs> I give you Greg better. Sounds better coming from you. Thank you, Mayor Hattishel, I appreciate it. So thank you again, uh, again, Greg Bitter. I'm the planning manager for the city of Roseville, and I'm here to talk to you tonight about development in West Roseville. There's uh, several topics I wanna touch on tonight. Uh, the first I wanted to talk about is how Roseville plans, how we anticipate growth, and how we manage growth. I also wanna talk about three of the fastest growing areas in the city, and I wanna give you some slides and give you some details about some of the current planning projects that have just recently been approved are under construction and are on the uh, um, in process and, and coming soon to Roseville. So anticipating the future, I have to say I really appreciate Mayor Hattishel, Supervisor Gore. They've, they've already done a great job talking about the specific plan process. Roseville's used the specific plan process for the last 35 years. We've been very successful. All development for the last 35 years has been approved and developed and anticipated through this process. This process allows uh, the city to use a master planning method to anticipate and manage growth. So it's a comprehensive look at growth. It allows us to make sure we have a balance of land uses to anticipate the future of population increases, make sure we have enough residential land use, commercial land use, job centers, and other uh, land uses that support that, that population growth. A very important part probably I think the most important part of the specific plan process is how do we provide public services? If you know Roseville, you know it's a full service city. We provide all municipal services, fire department, police department, parks and recreation, water, wastewater, electricity, solid waste. Um, this planning process allows all of these departments to ensure that as the population grows, we have the services ready to handle uh, that growing population. So a key component of our planning process and a long, long-standing policy of the city council is to ensure that development pays its own way. And what that means is that the city, existing taxpayers, the existing citizenry of the city of Roseville do not subsidize new growth areas. So how do we do this? Uh, developers are required to do fiscal impact studies to show that their projects are going to have a positive fiscal impact on the city's general fund. Some of the ways this happens is land dedication, community benefit fees, uh, um, community facility uh, fees, and also sales tax and property tax. We know what, what will be coming in in the future, so we know that these developments will have a positive impact. The mayor mentioned private development. Private development is actually out there building the homes, building the commercial developments. Um, and as they build these developments, they pay fees into city fee programs. So a lot of times, and this is a question that I've already seen on the, the, uh, the Zoom chat before we came up here, is how come the roads aren't, you know, how come all the roads aren't built? How come there's not parks built in certain neighborhoods? 
These fee programs, the, the fees are collected gradually as development occurs. As each house comes in, fees are paid to support these projects. So it takes a while before there's enough money in these capital improvement programs to build all of the parks, to build all, to widen all of the roads. So developers will build a certain amount of infrastructure and the city collects fees in order to provide the rest of the infrastructure. Housing is essential. I think this is a, a key um, topic. Everybody that's on the Zoom meeting is, lives in some type of housing or not. You're residents of, the, of uh, Western Placer County and we need housing. The last couple of years have been uh, the two of the fastest growing years in the city's history. We've uh, issued over 3,600 single family residential building permits. And we're just now finally seeing multifamily development starting to pick up and uh, match that pace. We've approved over 2,000 multifamily dwelling units. Several projects make up that, that number. And this is both market rate rental units, which is $2,000, $3,000 a month rents, and affordable rental units, which is, provides housing for the very low, low and moderate income level households. This variety of housing types, single family residential, multifamily market rate and affordable rental units provide such a variety of housing that it really allows everybody to be able to live in Roseville, it provides for a healthier community. I can tell you that you will start seeing some development, housing development occurring on, on land that wasn't originally designated for housing in past specific plans. This primarily has to do with the state's housing laws, some of the changes have put a greater burden on the city to provide land for housing, specifically affordable housing. So citywide major roadway improvements. Before I jump into the different areas of the city, I, I wanna show this map uh, of the citywide major roadway improvements. It may be hard to see on the screen. This map is available on the city's website and it gives you an idea of all of the roadway improvements that are currently on the books uh, for the city's public works department. It tells you the timing, anywhere between one and two years, all the way up to 10 years. If it's a developer-funded project, a CIP, which is a, one of those fee programs that pays in for that construction, or if it's a regional project, gives you the timeline. And I know uh, one of the questions that came up, Market Street, when is that going to connect to uh, Baseline Road? The answer is sometime later this summer, as soon as that Baseline Road segment gets completed, that intersection will be open. A question that comes up a lot is when will Westbrook, the small segment in green right here of Westbrook, Westbrook Boulevard be constructed? That is a developer paid for road. The development around that road is not occurring right now, so it's being delayed. But I can tell you there's some hope on the horizon. The city is working with the developer. We're trying to figure out if there's a public-private agreement that can be made to accelerate development of Westbrook. We really know that getting that north-south connection from Pleasant Grove down to Baseline is important. So here are the three main areas that I'm gonna talk about and spend the rest of my presentation talking about. These are the fastest growing areas in the city. You've got Campus Oaks. You've got the northwest quadrant of the city, which is made up of Fidiment Ranch, Creek View, or Winding Creek, and Amoruso Ranch. And then you have the southwest quadrant of the city, which is primarily made up of the Sierra Vista specific plan area. So Campus Oaks, really quickly, 950 units were approved on this site in 2015. Every one of those units has been approved and the construction is occurring. That residential development is almost uh, done. It should be done within the next few years. The Campus Oaks commercial site, home to Nugget Market and a wide variety of commercial uses, up and running for several years, more commercial uses are coming on board. I can tell you that last year, the City Planning Commission approved uh, entitlements planning entitlements for a new Ace Hardware, two new shop buildings that will provide even more retail and eating uh, opportunities in Campus Oaks, and a site for Oakmont to have a new senior living facility. So now the Northwest quadrant of the city, which is made up of Winding Creek, Fidiment Ranch Phase 3, Amoruso Ranch, and I will mention the Roseville Industrial Park project. Fidiment Ranch was originally approved for 5,900 units. Um, this is nearing completion. Phase three is nearing completion. Some of the, the bigger uh, projects that are going on right now, there's four multifamily projects that have been approved. One market rate project is under construction. One affordable project is just waiting for the rain to finish so they can have their groundbreaking. And then there's another market rate project and affordable project that have been approved, but construction has not yet started. 
Winding Creek, which is the Creekview specific plan, was originally approved for 2,000 dwelling units. Right now, 17, 1,700 of those units have been approved. Over 400 have either been constructed or under construction right now. So residential development is really kicking off in Creekview. Amarusa Ranch uh, is the latest or the newest specific plan that the city approved. That's the very northwestern uh, border of the city. And it was approved for over 2,800 dwelling units, about a half million square feet of retail, more than 20 acres of parks, 140 acres of open space, a fire station, an elementary school site. Infrastructure is just now being uh, moved or constructed up to, to get to Amaruso, and the first 500 units have been approved. So you could see residential development in Amaruso Ranch as early as 2024. So I want to talk about the plaza at Blue Oaks. We talked about uh, the specific plan process. The West Roseville specific plan was approved in 2004. The first shopping center was open in 2022. So it took a long time to get this shopping center approved. But now we finally have some retail development in Western Roseville. We have a grocery store, a wide variety of food options, retail options, a new daycare facility. You should see a new Arco AM PM being constructed very soon. So we're very excited that we finally have uh, some grocery and retail opportunities for you uh, Western Roseville residents. Roseville Industrial Park. I know on the chat, there's probably several people already asking questions about that this project. I'm not gonna go into a great level of detail here. I can tell you that Panatoni Development has an application in for about a 2.4 million square foot industrial project on 200 acres. This is at the far end of Blue Oaks Boulevard, at the very dead end of Blue Oaks Boulevard. This project is in the middle of the public review process. There's a draft environmental impact report that is currently out for public review. The comment period ends on April 21st for that project. And if you want a lot more detailed information, our city's website has a lot of detailed information about the project, links to the, develop, to the draft environmental impact report, contact information on how you can provide your opinions, your comments on the project to the city, and I can also tell you that the West Park Finment Ranch Neighborhood Association have a meeting scheduled for April 12th at St. John's Church. And this is going to be the prime topic of uh, discussion at that meeting. So if you want to participate in a meeting specifically about the Roseville Industrial Park and potential impacts it may have, that will be a great opportunity. The Sierra Vista specific plan. This is the southwestern uh, quadrant of the city. So I have a few projects to talk about. In this area, both in Sierra Vista and just outside of Sierra Vista, this was approved for over 8,800 residential units. A little over 4,000 have been constructed so far with more in development. I know there was a comment in the, uh, in the chat about talking about Sierra Vista. This is about halfway through the development process. Um, there's a lot of infrastructure, a lot of new community coming, on, coming online uh, in this area. So now I'm going to talk about a few projects that are in and around Sierra Vista that I think a lot of folks are interested in. The first is at the northeast corner of Fidiment and Pleasant Grove. This is a Safeway. This project was approved by the City Planning Commission last fall. It has a 55,000 square foot Safeway grocery store, about 20,000 square feet of shops and retail buildings, more food uses um, on the property. It also has a Safeway branded gas station that will be located at the corner. Just south of Pleasant Grove and to the east of the CVS, we're also processing an application for a grocery outlet neighborhood market. That project is still in process. An interesting project that I thought would, that folks might be interested in is on Baseline Road. It's north of Baseline Road. It's between Santucci Boulevard and Westbrook Boulevard. This is Erickson Senior Living. This is a, uh, a senior living community that is going to have a wide variety of, of different types of care. There's going to be just a little under 2,300 beds available on the site, and it's going to be made up of a assisted living units, um, assisted living, memory care, and there will also be a skilled nursing facility on the site. Some of the buildings are as tall as six stories, so it's quite a dense development. And this project could be going before the Planning Commission and City Council sometime this summer. And now the most asked about development in the western side of Roseville, the baseline marketplace. We get questions weekly on this project. When is this going to be built? So the baseline marketplace was approved in 2014. 
about three quarters of a million square feet of retail development, room for three large big box users, uh, over 130,000 square feet, probably two dozen uh, smaller retail buildings throughout the site, some gas stations, drive through restaurants. This is gonna have everything that a typical regional retail power center will have uh, to support the western side of Placer County and the western side of Roseville. So I think, I know here uh, we thought this was gonna be the slide that would make everybody the happiest. We're currently processing the first application in the baseline marketplace for a new Costco. It's 160,000 square foot Costco. Uh, it will have 32 pumps for gas and fairly unique, at least to me, is it will have a car wash associated with the gas station. So this project has been in process for about three or four months now, and we're getting very close uh, to finalizing all of our comments and getting ready to uh, get it to the approval process. I know Costco is anxious to get this under development and get the infrastructure started this calendar year. So I'll finish with a couple of slides. If you're interested in general development activity in the city, we have our city website. It's, you can find it through the development services webpage but it has links to current project details, new submitted projects. There's an interactive map so you can see building permit activity all throughout the city. It's a very, very valuable tool. For those of you that are interested in just generally how the city plans, how the city develops, some of the different city policies relating to development, we've put together a website called Development Decoded. It breaks down the different components of development really uh, makes it easy to understand in bite-sized chunks. And you know, there's a QR code. The website is here on the screen. We really encourage you to, uh, to access that, that website. And so with that, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Greg. And thank you to your uh, team uh, in uh, our planning department for not only be, you know, being available to the community to answer all their questions, but provide a high level of, uh, of planning to, uh, to our Roseville community. So thanks very much. Thank you, Mayor. Have a good night. Will do. Um, in addition to serving as the mayor of the city of Roseville, I work for Northern California Water Association. Northern California Water Association represents irrigation agricultural water suppliers from, from the ridge top of the Sierras to the river mouth uh, at the at the uh, confluence of the American and Sacramento uh, American and yeah American and Sacramento River. Uh, it's always an anxious time when uh, you're in the water management business. About October, last October we were planning to head into the fourth dry year in a row, which doesn't make agriculture, who we represent, very happy. But lo and behold, Mother Nature has her own uh, own plan in mind. And in addition to the precipitation, it's raining tonight. Our snowpack uh, represents a, 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 a two-thirds of our water supply here in the American River Basin. And a special feature tonight, we're going to show you how the Placer County Water Agency determines the water content in that snowpack. One forty three, one twenty four, one twenty eight, one two eight.
Well, that's a quick look at how the Placer County Water Agency measures the water content of the snowpack. That water comes down the North Fork and the Middle Fork of the American River, ends up in Folsom, where Roseville has the good fortune through our aquifer storage and recovery program to grab some of that water and put it in ground and bank it for the future. But I want you to hear from Andy Fecco, the general manager for the Placer County Water Agency. Andy served the people of Placer in various capacities with uh, PCWA since 2006. He oversees three independent sources of water supply for the agency's retail, wholesale, and agricultural customers, as well as directs the, directs the agency's water and energy stewardship throughout the county. Andy, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. Thank you, Mayor Houshell. So um, I thought I'd start tonight with just a look at where Placer County's water comes from. And um, we got a long and sort of storied history of developing our own water resources in this county um, for the benefit of the people of Placer. And so we'll start with just a little bit of history and geography and then talk a little bit about um, the future. And so um, on the map behind me, you're gonna see um, two sources of water in the upper Sierra, our Yuba River supply, and our American River Supply. So let's start with our Yuba River Supply. That is our most historic source of water supply in Placer County. Um, the reservoirs sort of north of the Highway 80 um, corridor um, were developed by gold miners um, in, uh, at, at, during the gold rush um, for use to um, mine gold and sluice gold. Um, and then as the gold rush wound down, that water supply became really important for our burgeoning agricultural industry and for the development of hydroelectric energy that was lighting um, homes and businesses throughout Placer and Sacramento counties. Um, around the turn of the century, uh, agriculture was really on the upswing. Uh, and then through World War II, when people really began to move to Placer County um, in sort of large numbers, that water supply began to transition for a water supply for new homes and businesses. And that's really what it's used for still today. PCWA buys water from Pacific Gas and Electric Company, who owns those reservoirs and hydroelectric plants. And then we take it and distribute it about 125,000 acre feet, which is a large number, about half of which goes to agriculture. Uh, we have all kinds of agricultural endeavors from the in the county from, from rice out in West Placer to mandarins and grapes in the foothills. Um, PCWA delivers a large quantity of that water. We still deliver it by the miner's inch, um, which is something that most people don't know. And it's uh, the historic way of delivering water. Uh, and then about half goes to homes and businesses, um, all the way from Alta um, to the county line um, out in the West. But um, one thing about that is that um, our predecessors, our forefathers in the late 1950s knew that wasn't gonna be enough water for all the economic development that Plaster had envisioned. Um, and so in the late 1950s and early 1960s, we began planning for our own locally built um, water supply project um, to help with that economic development in the future. And you'll see that up here called the American River Supply. And that's the video you just saw, our French Meadows and Hellhole Reservoir development, um, which is on the Middle Fork American River and the Rubicon River. And that's really our future water supply. Um, those reservoirs hold 340,000 acre feet. Remember, um, it takes about two households to use one acre foot. So we have 340,000 acre feet of water uh, in storage and it's gonna fill and spill this year. Um, and that water is available to come down through our own locally owned hydroelectric system. And then we can take that water out at Auburn or to serve folks like the city of Roseville at Folsom Lake. Um, and we've only ever used less than half of that supply uh, to date. And so about half that supply is reserved for the future. And so I wanna talk a little bit about the future tonight because we have plenty of water it's how to get it to, our, to the growing areas of our county that we're really working hard on right now. So at our, play, at our pump station in Auburn, which is at the old Auburn Dam site, we can get water out of the river and pump it to the surface at Ofer. And that's gonna be the site of our newest water treatment plant, which we're starting construction of in the next couple of years. Um, and that supply is gonna make its way through West Plaster County, out, past, uh, out to west of Highway 65, and serve um, new developments uh, in unincorporated areas of Placer, um, in portions that have not yet developed in the city of Lincoln. And then additionally, um, through our diversion at Folsom Reservoir, serve growing areas of Roseville um, and even Granite Bay. And so we've got 
a really rich mix of water supplies that we can treat water, but then that delivery system is really coincident and how we're building that delivery system is coincident with things like roads and neighborhoods. Um, as these places are constructed, we're coordinating with the counties and cities in West Placer to make sure that we have the infrastructure in the ground at the right times when it's needed, when homes and businesses are built so that we have enough, wa we have enough water supply, but then we have the infrastructure to serve those homes and businesses. Um, finally, I'm gonna talk a little bit about just overall stewardship. Um, we take stewardship really seriously, as does the County of Placer, I know, and the City of Roseville and the Granite Bay areas, because what we're trying to do is build um, a sustainable water supply. We don't want to overrun our water supplies, and we want to develop them responsibly, which means uh, we want to have financial stability, of course, but um, environmental stability, um, and we want to get those get uh, water to those places at the right times. And so part of our stewardship mission is our watershed work um, up in the forest. Uh, around our reservoirs, we're trying to avoid catastrophic wildfires, um, ruining water supplies for uh, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and we're also being really sensitive to places like the Lower American River, which is below Folsom Reservoir, which has threatened salmon and steelhead runs in that river. And we also want to make sure that as we're serving Placer County communities in the future, um, we have uh, the wherewithal in place with our water supplies to keep uh, those rivers and streams um, healthy for the future and for all of our kids' future. So that's really the story um, of PCWA um, and how we're serving water supplies both today um, and in the future. And I want to mention, um, Supervisor Gore mentioned it, in 2021 we did a deep dive um, with the county and the city of Roseville um, on water. That video is on Supervisor Gore's website, it's on the county website. You can access that um, and of course, if you have any questions, contact PCWA. We're happy to talk to um, our residents and our customers at any time. So thank you, Mayor Hattishell. Thank Welcome you. back. Thank you, Andy, for that presentation. <laughs> Water is important, and uh, I'm glad you're managing it in a sustainable way. Thank you. So um, next up, we have a presentation on a project that's near and dear to a lot of our hearts. And Supervisor Gore has been a champion to get uh, to get advanced over the last three or four years. So we're gonna watch a little video here and then we're gonna hear from Supervisor Gore and Ken Graham. Well, I'm out here today on Baseline Road, taking a look at what's happening with traffic, what's happening with all the growth happening here in West Placer and how is it all being coordinated together. You know, a little bit of background. I think a lot of people see all the development that's occurring here in West Placer County, uh, particularly here along the Baseline Corridor. Over the next few decades, not years, there's gonna be probably 20,000 new homes built along this corridor and tens of thousands built in this West Placer area. It drives really what the importance is of Baseline Road. It is the connection to a lot of the job centers down in city of Sacramento. And so we need to make sure that we keep mobility occurring along this corridor. So what the plan has been since the very beginning, the early 2000s, is we want to take this two-lane road, we want to eventually widen it to six lanes, all the way to 9970. But it's not going to happen six lanes overnight. The first step is going to take this two-lane road and slowly widen it to four-lane road, working our way all the way to the county line. But that's not going to be good enough. We need to get through Sutter County with four lanes to get it all the way to the interchange there because traffic is not going to be any better unless we can get four lanes all the way to the freeway. We've had for the last 20 years, all the homes built in this area have been contributing to widen this roadway. So there has been a plan to get that money raised so that today you start seeing work actually occurring out here. Baseline Road is not going to be enough. Uh, there is a plan also to build a whole new roadway called the Placer Parkway, about three miles north of here, going from Highway 65 to Highway 99, a new limited expressway uh, to take some of the load, particularly though for those people that don't live in this community who today take baseline, will have an alternative to get down to the city of Sacramento. So what do you see going on today? Today we've got a lot of that widening has begun, at least between Watt Avenue and Fitiment, 
You, in the area of Westbrook, the widening the four lanes has been essentially complete. It's not fully striped and open, but the pavement is now there. You see that concrete barrier rail going down beyond Watt Avenue. That is under construction. That will be fully constructed out by the end of 2023. In addition to that, that's gonna leave a gap here between Fittiman and Westbrook. That is still two lanes. That work is currently being bid out uh, with the intent that it will start construction this year and be done in 2024. We hope by the end of 2024 that we will have a four lane road all the way from Fittiman beyond Watt Avenue to the city limit line. From there, as more development occurs, we will continue that four lane widening out towards the west. That is the future plan. We are now in design right now to remove the stop signs that occur along Baseline Road at Locust Road, Pleasant Grove South, Pleasant Grove North, and Natomas Road. One of those will be eliminated. The three others are gonna be converted into traffic signals to help that traffic move along through those areas even before they get widened out to four and six lanes. All this work is being coordinated and collaborated between the city of Roseville and Placer County. But we are in talks and we've been in discussions for a couple years now with Sutter County. If you go over into Sutter County, you cross over in what's called Riego Road, which is the extension of Baseline Road, you'll see there is a lot of new grading going on out there. They have their own development, Lakeside. 3,000 new homes that have begun construction and probably over the next five to 10 years, there'll be a bunch of new homes there. We are working with them to help fund these improvements because some of those intersections with the stop signs are in Sutter County. It's gonna take all of us to keep everybody moving in this area. Joining us now is our Director of Public Works for Placer County, Ken Graham. Ken, great job on the video. Thank you so much, I enjoyed that. and. Um, I really appreciate you giving us an overview of those future uh, roadways. What other roadways do we have in West Placid or that are coming about? Tell us a little bit about those, if you would. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Uh, thank you for having me here this evening. Uh, we've been talking so much about the east-west travel. How do we get from one side over to Highway 7099? Well, a lot of our residents are trying to get down to the Interstate 80 corridor, and so they're using Willerga Road, they're using Watt Avenue. Just a couple of years ago, we completed the, the Willerga Road Bridge. We right widened here. it, we yes. made it taller, we made it longer, making sure that for those that have lived here a while, we'll know that road closed when it rained a lot. But we're trying to make sure it stays open year round, no matter what the conditions are, and widen the entire road to the county line to four lanes. So now you've got four lanes all through that corridor. So that's a great start. But there's also Watt Avenue. That's the other major north-south connection. We are working on that right now. Most of the road widening is gonna occur as development occurs along that roadway. But there's one big impediment, Dry Creek, another huge bridge that needs to be done, somewhere in the order of $50 million to replace that bridge. Uh, we are in the process, we've secured most of them or half the money. Uh, we are in the process of designing it. We've environmentally cleared it and we are in right-of-way acquisition phase. So we're talking to collect that prop or get the property we need to be able to widen and make that bridge bigger to ensure it can serve our residents going into the future. Great, well, thank you. You mentioned a very large price tag, and I think it's important for folks to know that these roadways are expensive to build, and we work hard at getting money from um, our developers, from the state, really working together to try to get the money that we need to build these roads. So thank you, Ken, for that. So we are wrapping up. I know we have provided a lot of information for you this evening, uh, but thank you so much for joining us. And as I mentioned, this presentation will be on my website by the end of the week so you can share that information. What I really hope is that you've learned some things and that you will take this information and share it with your neighbors and your friends because really our desire is to make sure our community is informed about what's happening all around us. I wanna say thank you to my colleagues, Supervisor Landon, okay. Mayor Hodeschelt, and thank you to our panelists. They did a great job. And thank you all for joining us this evening. What we will do as we wrap up is there will be all the contact information on the screen behind us. It'll have contact information for each of the presenters or the departments. And if you have any other questions, 
We'll give you some time to write down those uh, emails and phone numbers and feel free to reach out to any of us with, that, with any questions. So thanks again. Thank you all and mm -hmm. have a great rainy evening and we look forward to seeing you in the community soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah.